Good evening, my name is Isaac, and this is the Voice of a Veteran series on Z Saga, where I talk about my time in and around the military, because both myself and my dad were are veterans of the United States military. My dad from the um, Air Force, he got out as a colonel and me as a corporal of the Marine Corps as an ammunition technician. But I'll start from the beginning where I was born on a military base hospital in Michigan, K.I. Sawyer Air Force Base, which is now closed. Um, prop. This is from that hospital. Um, it's just a sign that I found when I went there a few years ago visiting the area again. Um, but yeah, um, I was born on a military base. My dad was in the Air Force. He was a pilot um, and he was on that base flying um, big planes in support of Operation Northern Watch or Northern Skies or something like that where we were making sure Russia didn't come up over Canada and that's a strategic place to have a base for that so we were there for about a year and then we moved to um, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in Ohio um, I forget which city but that's that was only a few years there then we moved to Offutt Air Force Base near Omaha, Nebraska. Uh, fun fact, one of the top 10 places um, other countries would probably hit first because it's a strategic place for whatever and it's a known fact so I'm not like giving away state secrets. Um, you can look it up. But yeah, off at Air Force Base there for a few years and then we moved to southern Germany where my dad was doing I don't know what he was doing but I got to go into some secret places and not really but you know they were like on base so they felt like oh adult stuff like and it's military and like scary and whatever um, so yeah we lived there for few years on Panzer Kasern, which was an army base and a marine base as well um, for European operations right after the Cold War ended. Um, I'll talk about that in some other videos. I'll talk about all this in some other videos. But uh, after Germany, we went back to Omaha, Nebraska, off at Air Force Base. Um, and my dad was probably a major by that point in the Air Force. Um, then we went to Rome, Italy, where my dad went to the, um, NATO, um, college, um, I don't know. He got to like learn about things with other officers in other mostly European countries. Um, and that was for a few months, half a year. Went to an international school there. Um, then we went to England where we lived in and my dad worked at RAF Mildenhall, Royal Air Force Base Mildenhall, um, where he flew big planes again. Um, after England, we moved to the DC area. We lived in Virginia 
and um, my dad worked for the National Imagery and Mapping Agency and this was around the time of 9-11 um, so my dad was actually supposed to be in the Pentagon on that day so I was scared of terrorism because of that and um, the DC sniper so I joined the military after high school where I went to boot camp for the Marine Corps in South Carolina, Paris Island. Um, but we'll back up a little bit and I talked first to the Navy recruiter who almost got me to be a s submarine tech. Um, but then Reagan died and that made it so I couldn't go to the military entrance processing station, MEPS. And then I tried to get into the Air Force first, but everyone's trying to get in there first because it's easier. And uh, I wasn't going to try to use my dad as a, hey, help me get into the Air Force. So then I talked to the Army and the Marines after the Navy didn't get me in. And I was like... Well, I'll join the Marines because that's cooler. <laughs> so, I'm a Marine. <coughs> um, went to Paris Island in South Carolina for boot camp. Went to Marine combat training in North Carolina. Camp Geiger. <coughs> went to ammo ammunition technician school in Redstone Arsenal, Alabama, where the Navy and everyone else does that stuff, or did that stuff, along with NASA. Um, then I went to Camp Pendleton, California, and was part of Ammunition Company under Supply Battalion under the Combat logistics regiment under the marine logistics group the first marine logistics group I think that's how it went but I'm not totally brushed up on my organizational charts um, and so I was stationed there then I got detached and joined the quick reaction force where I was in Iraq the first six months of 2006 with the quick reaction force on Camp Altakatum near um, Habania, Iraq between Ramadi and Fallujah it was the main supply base for Marines um, in the country during the Iraq invasion um, We'll talk more about that sh later. <laughs> um, then the second half of that year, I was the ammunition technician chief of the regiment. So when the quick reaction force and the military police group and everyone with supply regiment uh, or supply battalion and the combat logistics regiment needed ammunition I was the ammo tech who ordered and issued it kind of thing um, then I went back to California for another year and then the first half of 2008, I went over again with Ammo Company this time and was the records clerk, then chief, then corporal of the guard, well, acting sergeant of the guard as a corporal, um, and I mean... Yeah, we'll talk about all that later. But uh, then I went back, got out at the end of 2008, 
and um, became a veteran for peace. So, um, seen a lot and have some opinions. So, I'll uh, give you the voice of a veteran. Um, and hope you enjoy it. Subscribe, and I'll always label these as a voice of a veteran series episode um, when I talk about my time in the military and around the military as a kid and as an adult um, and what I've seen from the Air Force and in the Marine Corps um, yeah thank you Semper Fidelis always faithful to my friends and family in the military and outside of it. Love y'all and peace out.